Oh. Well, here's the thing. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You guys okay. got snacks. Well, it's time well, to take them out. The Cause there's a show. In town. Eat into the mic. Eat into it. There's a show in town. Welcome to the We Out Here Every May Not Podcast for Show, but now podcast. And guys, like I said, there's a show in town. Uh, our producer was making notes for the show and said, damn, guys, is this Silk Sonic? Did we just win the Grammys? Do we have a residency at MGM? Because there's so much news to hit today. And guess what? We're going to deliver. We're going to deliver all the news. All the news Does, from... b- before you continue, I'm going to interrupt ahead. you really quick. Does Silk Sonic really have a residency in Las Vegas? Uh, or are you just will, talking shit? We are, I'm not talking shit, and we're going to that show. Okay. What the fuck How much is it? Seven thousand dollars? I think it's like five hundred bucks a ticket. So we can take one person based off all our manscape ads. Wait, so what's Silk Sonic? Around. And get out of my face! Get out of here, dude! You're not get even out Filipino, of here. bro. You're not Filipino dude, if you don't you know even who Silk Sonic is. Are you even half black, half Korean? You I can't have, even be. I have cousins. <laughs> you can't call that yourself are, a Latina anymore. Anyway. I have cousins that are half Filipino. Doesn't count, dude. Doesn't count because you don't know who Silk Sonic is. Silk Sonic, I don't. I don't. Bro, you have a computer like, in front of you and you still haven't searched. It. Still it's crazy, it. bro. Because I got jalapeno seasoning on my fingers and I don't want to get it on. Touch my your head. eyeballs right now for not knowing what Silk. Guys, Sonic how is. about we give a proper intro eyeballs. to our husbands of the show first? Uh, shout out to our Silk Sonic husbands, Anderson Pack, uh, Bruno Mars. Uh, Alex doesn't know who they are. And uh, shout out to my uh, juicy husband right here. I, I love that shirt you're wearing, man. The black tee. What is that? Is what is that? Grateful Dead. What is that? I don't know. Oh, it's supposed to match with these guys. Do you guys know these guys? Uh, yeah, that's Sonic Silk. It's their other color. Oh, oh, yeah. So this is a Slayer shirt, baby. You know what I'm saying? Slayer all day. Fucking Hail Satan. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Let's go. That husband right there. He's a chicken wing ling ling for life. Uh, I also got my other husband to the right of me, I guess, in my perspective. What is his shirt? What is he wearing? I'm wearing Hasbula's tiny shirt. Because... Let's go. With also, you know what? People say Hasbula shirt, but we always forget the other guy. Hasbulla and who? That's because the other guy. Who hey, is that but, other guy? But let's be real though. I didn't buy this shirt because Abdu Rozik was on it, or this Ooh, guy. he knew his name. <laughs> I bought Abdu it because Rosic. of Hasbulla, bro. You know what I mean? That's why I bought the shirt. Okay. And now and it's Jeremy's, small on me. And Jeremy's Look how small like, it is. So hey, is I that got... Hasbulla's uncle or dad or something? I don't know, but do you think that they made that shirt small on purpose because it's a Hasbulla shirt? Maybe. This, this I, I feel like this shirt would fit on Hasbulla and it would look pretty like normal on him. And he'd be like, thank you so much, brother. Or is Nick just making gay? Or is my dryer really hot and shrinking all my clothes? And that's, Nobody a, knows. that's a wild accusation. You guys wash yeah. your clothes with hot water or cold water? Both. Cold water. Usually. I only ever do cold. Why do people do hot? Hot would be good for like uh, towels and stuff. For what? Like, because what? You want them to kill germs? Oh, uh. <laughs> so, it kills your butt wipes, bro. Yeah. But I mean, when you come out the shower, you're clean. Who cares? Not me, Where? dude. I still have streaks. <laughs> I, Gil, oh, I, feel like, I feel like Gilbert stands face first in the shower and never turns around. And then he's done. And then I don't open boxes with PCs in them. <laughs> yeah, I have exactly. a I have a I have a prompt for all the We Out Here fans. And it was a. It was is a that be anything my sister is talking about. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Do you guys wipe from when you guys go caca and you guys go caca mierda in your toilet? Do you say guys one more wipe time. from the Ooh, front? One more time. Do you guys wipe from the front or do you wipe from the back? And you know that's the question of the day. So um, all the we out here fans, please answer down below because we all right, so how do you guys wipe to this. Obviously, like this, like a normal person. That's yeah, but Gilbert. But keep this in mind before Gilbert answers, guys. Gilbert also stands on his toilet seat when he shits. Okay, exactly. So I had talked about this with someone else. If I, I think most usually I'll go from the back, but Ooh. sometimes when I'm squatting, I don't know. It's easier to pinch from the front, get all angles, type of situation. Okay. I feel, so I you're feel versatile. Like, does that sound? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I do orthodox and. Uh, South Park. You're, South Park. you're the Dominic South... Cruz of at wiping ass, dude. Bro, that's dude, my hand is shaking the, all the whole time. It just shakes the front back. <laughs> Shit's oh, all over the walls. That's a question. <laughs> that's a good question, too, on top of this. I'll answer mine first, right? So I go back because, like, I mean, it's just easier. But what hand do you use? Do you use your right hand or your left hand? Right hand. Your dominant hand, right hand. Yeah, dominant hand. I'm not going to yeah. use my left. If I use Why my would left. I use my weak hand. 
I'm gonna something's gonna happen. Something. I use my left happen. because it, I have more mobility, but I'm right-handed. Hey man, when we're talking about shit wiping, we can't be using words like. Mobility. And then my finger accidentally yeah. goes like this. Ah hi! Just joking. <laughs> Did you make that sound too? Ah hi hi! Every time my mom's like, "Oh, he's shitting in there," so he's okay. Damn. All right, guys. Damn. Well, we're gonna talk a uh, shit cap recap. Uh. There were no fights, gentlemen. There was no fights that had happened uh, this past weekend. Uh, did you guys see anything, though, that you'd like to recap? I'm going to leave this open to you guys. Mm. Was there anything that needs recapping from an event? The ADCC trials was, uh, if you guys are big jujitsu heads. Was Paul Harris the, uh, there? That's all I care about. He wasn't. He wasn't Damn there. Um, I don't even know if he's grappling like that anymore. Do, but... people, hate, do people really hate that guy? Kind of. <laughs> people don't Still... really like him that much. That's the guy that doesn't let go, right? Yeah, he'd been locks. ripping people's knees and shit. Yeah, but uh, the the ADCC trials was uh, this past weekend the West Coast trials. Okay, and there you know was anyone really in cool matches? Um, you know, J Rod, Nicky Rod's little brother. Okay, he had he won his division, which was really cool. But there was a lot of big names in jujitsu that um, competed this past weekend, which was uh, fun to watch. So, recap on that. Nice. But then again, it's not a jujitsu show; this is an MMA show. So no, I don't know why I'm bringing it up. I'm sorry. Uh, there there's a, there's a big. Uh, my mom saw Morbius and she said it was good. Ooh, so. recap that. Really, your mom said it was good. I yeah, my was, mom said it was good. I heard it was garbage, Did you see it? bro. I heard really? it was basura. I heard Kasoni, it was Sony, bro. Oh, hold on. Did you guys watch Moon Knight? I did. No. And that Moon was not Knight bar was very good. That's not was, basura. That's dude, the opposite. What's the opposite would, of basura? It felt like a movie. Um, a grande. Gigante, gigante. Yeah. Well, my, all, all I'm saying, my mom came home because she went and saw it, and I was at work, and then I got home. And when she got home, one of the best movies I've ever seen. That's what wow. she said. Wow. Well, great other demographic. Maybe she likes Jared Leto. She does, and she then she she does, and then that's why she's like, I. The only thing I hate about Jared Leto is that he never does the sequels for his movies, and he did so good. And then she also did say this, where I was like, moms. She was like, because honestly, I think he was the best Joker. And I literally almost swang on my mom's right then and there. Because I was like, you know, she's a super fan. I'm like, you know, that's false right there. Don't even make that statement one more game in my presence. Because yeah, Jared Leto was like the worst Joker that ever was played. The so, best Joker is from the new Batman. That's the best one. No. For sure. Mm -mm. Best Joker. Zoe Kravitz? I, yeah, Zoe Kravitz. I think, I think it's tied, bro, because like Heath Ledger and a Walking <laughs> Phoenix did so good, but the Jokers are different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're like different Jokers, but I my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies is the Joker with Walking Phoenix in it, so I always, go, I always go him. <laughs> dude, I love that movie. I don't know why people but, hate it. It was weird. But Moon Knight. But Moon Knight, dude. Moon Knight, oh, yeah. Get, really into, good. get into Moon Knight. Um, but like Moonlight, you gotta watch it, Alex. You gotta watch, you it, watch it. Honestly, speaking uh, of like the fight stuff, great fight sequences or action sequences at least. Well, it was just uh, it was so it was very different. Like it was kind of a little uh, a little more PG thirteen plus. You know what I mean? Not like, as Marvel mature. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more action movie. Uh, Disney, Disney plus, plus. Uh, and Oscar Isaac is pretty good in it. And I, it was enough where I'm like I I need to see the next episode. I don't know about you, you guys, but I just I hate when like. Cause like, isn't it the guy from Star Wars? In, Oscar like Isaac. Put some respect on that name, please. Oscar Isaac. But I just hate when people keep doing like different like shit like that. Cause I'm like, no, bro, you that guy. Like you're the guy from Star Wars. I don't want to uh... see you as Moon Knight and stuff. What the fuck? Same with like that's remember that's what I said about the Batman. I'm like, bro, you're Twilight. You're not Batman. But bro, actually... but was he not Batman? Yeah, was he didn't he good in Batman. There though, we go. So. So but, that was a weird example that you used. So when hey, you watch the Joker, you're like, "Why are you the Joker? You should be Johnny Cash." What are you hey, doing? Hey, low key. When yeah, I, exactly. I watched, I like this there's, guy. There's logic there, bro. I was at I my like friend's house and they were watching good. Signs, and then Walking Phoenix came out. I'm like, "Nah, nah. Walking where his long hair? Where his long hair at? Where, yeah. Why? Why he not? Why he not trying to kill people right now? What the fuck?" Uh, I'd like to just uh, also give a shout out to a uh, uh, storied career, Bruce Willis. He's not dead, but. Mm. He can't. Um, I don't know why I'm just thinking about that now. We're thinking about actors okay. and movies. But uh, hey, Bruce Willis, Die Hard. Let's go, baby. What? Yeah, try to fill up time because there's no fights. What's the deep? <laughs> he has a disease called aphasia or some shit. Yeah. I think it's alopecia. And Will Smith said, keep his name out of your mouth. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> bitch. Bro, imagine. Keep Bruce Willis's name out of my wife's Keep Bruce Willis's name out of my wife's mouth. <laughs> what? Ooh. What? Yeah. Don't let her say it. <laughs> Is that dead? That's dead now, right? People are done with that. 
I don't think so because Will Smith just came out. He's like, I retire my thing for national or academy. No, that means so no more nothing. screeners, no more screeners, and he can't vote anymore. Great. You know, you know the best thing is Nick gets screeners. I yeah, know I was, was gonna ask, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> like when he retires from that, like what does that mean? He didn't retire. He resigned. Nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. It means yeah. he'll be joining SAG after again, but also doesn't matter that he's SAG after because he's Will Smith and he can he do whatever. He literally just movie. gets no screeners. That's it. That's that. Does that mean like movies before they come out? <laughs> yeah. So, mm. so you could vote. But are any of these celebrities really voting? No. They should. I get a ballot. I don't even vote. I just give it to Alex. So he can just put Joker every time for every movie. Every year. <laughs> like, I hey, want some screeners? Like, hey, where the fuck do I sign up? Nick. Nick gets them all the time. I don't get them anymore. Do you vote, Nick? No, do you used I don't to? vote. His dad probably uh, no. my dad. My dad is in it. Like a mm. loser, dude. He doesn't <laughs> even watch. He watches the movies and fast forward. He just fast forwards it and he's like, oh yeah, that was pretty good. Like on 1X. So it's like, dude. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. That's how he watches movies. Him, watching he my dad watch ba- like recorded basketball games is so frustrating. Because oh, like he'll terrible. literally fast forward in between the free throws and like the ref calls <laughs> and just watch like a play by play. It's ridiculous. It's you like know, the you most frustrating. Him, you way should tell watch. him to watch House of Highlights. Honestly, it'll save him time. I, and he started watching that. He actually put me on to House of Highlights. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, dude, I'd love to watch your dad watch uh, the Chinese opera in Fast Fast, fast Forward. forward. <laughs> he won't watch it. That's racist, Alex. Stop laughing. I'm no, not. I was, I was dancing. Was God, man. It was a test for you. You always fail these Asian tests. You can never yeah. just not laugh at an Asian accent, dude. And you lost uh, your Filipino card because you don't know who Silk Sonic is. And yeah, but I like Lumpia. So, uh, Sonic, Sonic Silk. Sonic Silk, baby. Yang Chow I, fried oh. rice. Let's go. I had, my, I had my first chicken feet ever. I didn't know where, how to where, eat it, though. Where did you have dim sum? No, no, no. I was at a... I went to... Remember that uh, the, the all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet that I took us to that one time, Nick, or told us to mm-hmm. go to? Mm-hmm. You uh, went to a they, buffet Alex had to go to? Wow. Yeah. yeah. It, it was good. It's a good buffet, but they... Uh, they had chicken feet, and it was just, like, two little things. So I didn't know how to eat it, but I was just, like, kind of, like, biting off the skin on the round of the thing. I don't know. Your That's kind of pretty much how you do it. You're, just, uh, okay. you're sucking everything but the bones. That's you suck the tendons, dude. You uh, suck the tendon. bone, dude. You suck that. You gotta... And I had pig feet. Rooster Same. cock. Yeah. Same. <laughs> I had pig feet, some octopus feet. Mm. I had this purple bun that had, like, it tasted oh, like taro? peanut butter Let's inside go. of it or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, it was good, though. All right, I got guys. a peanut butter bun. Look, Excuse guys. me, Chinese man. Can I get a peanut butter bun, please? So I got my card back. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Hey, but also, for everyone listening, if you ever go to a Chinese restaurant, just yell at a waiter, can I get my peanut butter bun, Chinese man? Just yell purple, that. In that a purple in that peanut accent, butter bun. Yeah. That accent. They'll love it. They love that shit. Especially uh, Speaking of loving shit, uh, let's get into our We Out Here morning news. Guys, DC hyped by Chimaev, but things hanging out with Till spoils the mystery. Ooh, should we read into this? Nick, can you fill us in a little bit on... What was DC's perspective on that comment? He just says that the mystery of Chemayev might be advantageous for him, like in his career, and the fact that he's kind of letting mm. people look at his life and how he interacts with people might be a disadvantage. But I kind of get what he what he means by that, right? Because there is something. It's it's like Habib and all those guys, right? Kind of people, yeah. especially Americans. It, it seems like. They either it can go both ways. They're they're either really fascinated with like somebody else from a different country with a different accent. And they kind of want to learn about it, or it completely turns them off, right? But um, for a guy like Chemayev, I, I feel like you know he he could probably use the mystery a little bit. But now it's at a point where he's like a megastar, so I think you can't really stop that media machine. Everyone's gonna want to do videos with him. You know, Darren Till and his company, the Block Asset guys, they're the ones that kind of signed Chemayev and said, hey, we know you're a big star. Let's do this video blog thing. And it's kind of hitting, like, everyone loves it in the MMA community. And it's to the point where I feel like they're going to do a TV show with both those guys. Smash Brothers. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Smash Brothers. But but all this goes away if Chemayev doesn't win. Shemayev has to win, you know, like he has to smash everybody. And just like he says, but I feel like it's going to continue. I don't Bro, think Gilbert smash. thinks so. 
Mish. Um, Mish. There is something to what DC is saying about the mystery. I feel like uh, maybe you guys hop on the of, bandwagon. Dude. Think of it, no, but think of any fighters, right? Who let's just see if there's any correlation to or truth to what he said. Are there any fighters that you can think of where it's like their rise was like undefeated, and as soon as they started getting more notoriety, maybe they didn't start losing, but they started getting more decisions. Cody Garbrandt. So people, bro. Yes, I would even say Israel Adesanya to a certain point, where people there's so much stuff on him and his team training that it's uh, you can game plan against it. I think a lot better. There's just more footage. The more you fight, the bigger mm, yeah. you become. Is that but not I true? think I think kind with of? the the footage like thing, the is, effect. yeah, the footage thing is one thing, but I mean, it's just like he he has what I feel like is the most important tool in MMA, and it's grappling, and he's so good at it that it doesn't matter if you see his footage. It's just like. You know, everybody knew what Habib was going to do, but he was still just went in there and did it to you anyways. It didn't matter yeah, how yeah. long you watched him wrestle or what. You know that he's going to trap your legs with his feet and lock him up. Like, you know he's that's exactly what he's going to do, but he's still just able to do it. So I think it's like the same shit with Hamzad. He's going to – you can see all you want, but he's still going to go in there and do what he wants to fucking do. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I – I like it though because it's just like, bro, you do want to see this other it's shit fun. from them, it's you cool. know? Because like he doesn't, he doesn't fight it a lot, so it's like you want to see more shit about him, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if he's gonna drop some blogs or some shit, I'm like, cool, I'll watch that because you know we can't see him fight all the time and shit. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I do think it is harder. You brought up Khabib and you talk about Chimaev. I think it is easier to game plan against a striker, a high level striker, than it is a grappler it seems like yeah mm -hmm. is that i feel like the footage if you if you had like a bunch of training footage of like or just stuff of like izzy i think it's easier to nullify that than like you just said if you're just mm -hmm. good at grappling you're just good at grappling there's nothing you can really watch i guess well the other thing though too is i feel like with guys like specifically habib hamza Habib kind of opened the door. Let's put a third for... person. I feel like we need a third name there. If, if no, no, no. Are... But but Habib kind of opened the door for this like Russian like character almost. Like I smash you guy. Like I kill everybody. Yeah. Like he kind of opened that door for that. And when Habib left, Hamza came and kind of filled that void a little bit. And for me, I've wished that there was more video footage, and more training stuff. Of Habib at AKA, because have you guys seen those videos of him with training him AKA with like DC? Yeah, those are fun. Yeah, and I feel like that is kind of the inspiration of Hamza and Darren Till because watching another high level fighter like DC and the rest of the AKA guys all interact in a vlog style format with the guys like Habib and seeing that cultural clash was really cool. And for me, like it was probably one of my favorite pieces of content out of the MA world at that time. So I feel like Hamzat and uh, Darren Till are trying to capture that in a lot of ways. And it is really cool to see them grow together and kind of see where their careers go now. Cause mm -hmm. Darren Till is kind of at a crossroads with his career. And it's pretty interesting that he linked up with a guy like Hamzat. But at the same time, both of those guys, Hamzat and, uh, Hamzat and Habib. Yeah. You can watch what they do. You can watch the techniques that they do, but they also bring another level of pressure and intensity that a lot of guys can't really perceive through video or they won't feel it until they're in the octagon with them. And that presents a whole nother adjustment mm -hmm. period. And yeah, I'm sure we'll see something like that when in this weekend with um, Gilbert Burns and Hamza. So we'll talk about that later though. What's, what's crazy about, yeah, like, <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like, if if Hamza can keep doing what he's doing, bro, I feel like at the end of the day, he, he I feel like we could be witnessing one of the greatest fighters. Like I think he might surpass Habib or some shit yeah. like that. Because yeah. like even to me, like Habib's had some fun ass fights, but just watching like what Hamza's done in his four fights, you're like, bro, this shit's fucking wild, man. He's being the absolute shit out of people. They they yeah. posted this um the striking differential um for UFC's uh. And in the UFC for people's first or first four fights, right? And who had the highest, right? The second one was like twenty four to like four or some shit like that. Hamzat was a hundred and twelve to one. Jeez, like crazy. that's the gap that he literally did five times. Like he like of the gap, it's fucking insane, bro. So and and that one strike was off like somebody's back and just yeah. punched him in the face, you know. And, like, it's but, crazy. I mean, honestly, I feel like we might be witnessing... I think he's that good, honestly. And, like, watching this shit with him and Till 
And like, you know, him striking with Till, you're like, bro, like he's he might, I'm like, fuck, if he fought Till, he might beat the fuck out of Till. So it's like Did you guys see the uh interview with Sean Strickland? Uh, no, uh, recently what, what with the saying? Schmo. Well, they had uh... Can I get a round of applause everybody? Today, I'm excited to announce Manscaped launched their Ultra Premium Collection. Believe it or not, it's for your not-so-private parts. I'm talking mm -hmm. about a leveled-up hygiene routine with your favorite manly scent. This is an all-in-one skin and hair kit for everyday man and covers you from head to toe. And I mean that goddamn literally. Manscaped is trusted below the waist, and I'll trust them with the rest. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code WEOUTHERE. We out here. All right, guys. So I, I'm after. I have a confession to make. I haven't recently been using the Manscaped wow. body moisturizer. This is his confession. Huh? This is my confession. I haven't been using it recently, but your boy was getting dry because it's getting a little colder in California right now. So I start and I start cracking. So I started using it recently, and I was sitting with my girl, and she was like, "Yo, what is that smell? Like, what, you have a new, uh, you have a new like cologne or something?" And I said, "No, babe, that is my." hydrating body moisturizer you got, you got your boy looking sleek and has a nice little smell and it makes me feel fresh and my girl loved it so you know i think you guys should consider getting this for yourself because Let's maybe go. you might need this in your life i don't know uh and guys you nick grabbed that from their ultimate uh premium collection keep in mind that is four products plus a gift inside and the best thing about it not only is this stuff great it makes you smell great it makes you feel good uh products are cruelty free paraben free vegan friendly and dye free the best ingredients with zero compromise. Guys, get 20% off and free shipping with the code we out here at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code we out here at manscaped.com. The power of attraction is now in the bottle. Thanks to Manscaped. Again, we out here, we out here. at manscaped.com. Let's go. Let's go. 20% off, free shipping. Come on. Oh, man. yeah. Peace. My bad. Huh? Um, Darren Till and Hamza stopped at. I think extreme couture. I saw a picture of that, but I didn't see Yeah, it. so they all went yeah. to go train together and everybody was they I, I think they asked Sean Strickland, like, how were your rounds with uh Hamza? And he goes, You know, like on the feet, I was able to help hold my own and we were doing pretty well with each other. And then there was a pause about like the grappling. Hmm. And then he pretty much insinuated that like, Oh yeah, I got I was getting tapped out like crazy, uh, once it hit the ground. So Sean Strickland, Strickland is big. Yeah, dude. He's a big boy. He's at 185. <laughs> and in the training room, obviously, fights are different. But with that style, it's like he could already beat the top, mm -hmm. uh, a top, high quality top 10 guy in a weight class above him with grappling. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know. He, he It just shows how dominant he is and what a psychopath this guy is. I huh? think, yeah, I think, you know, like how. Habib and all of them, or even you know, even Floyd Mayweather has said it. Even about the Jake Paul brothers, are like, I'll fight two people in one night. I honestly think you could probably give Hamzat two, maybe three fights in the same night, and he'd beat the shit out of every single one of them. Like if you gave him people in the top ten, I bet you anything. Like we're already seeing it. Like like Li Jing Lian, he just fucking manhandled. He was in the top ten. Like I, I I think that he could beat like two, three people in the same night. It's just that grappling, bro. We're starting to see that grappling is the fucking is the key to it all. Like if you are if you are on a different level of grappling, you can just do whatever you want in these fights, as long as you can set it up good, right? Because we've seen people like Curtis Blades who hasn't been the best at being able to like differentiate or like set up his takedowns and wrestling. Sean Shirk. But... Yeah, <laughs> Sean Shirk. The muscle Shark. Bro, he was so Shirk. juiced up. I remember even being a kid. Maybe his body type. I remember even being a kid, being like, "That guy looks like he's on drugs." And then, of course, he was. I'm just like, "All right." <laughs> that kid uh, looks like he's on drugs. That's but yeah, I'm excited for this weekend, man. I'm fucking. I'm so stoked. I can't wait. Um, guys, next news story. Uh, this one's. I don't know too much about this, but this headline is very intriguing. UFC cuts Rothwell ahead of planned Gustafson bout. Um, uh, yeah, I, I. That's crazy. I feel like this was announced. Let him I was go. expecting to see this as a good comeback fight for uh, Gustafson. It's a good and, fight. Uh, mm. Rothwell, you know, I, he's kind of been, he's a vet. He's been in the game forever, all sorts of leagues, including the UFC. Uh, do we know any other information of why? One of the reasons. Mm. They have no information. They just kind of let him go. But I feel like. Well, it's crypto, babe. Let's it, speculate. Let's go. Well, look, it's like heavyweight in the UFC is pretty. It, it's It's like they got more contenders now. But don't but you need I feel them, like though? you need a Ben Rothwell. Like you need yeah. a staple, right? You need but a staple. You need ben a Rothwell is forty years old. 
He is uh, coming off a loss, but he also has like f- sixty fights yeah, in MMA. Nice. So the guy's a legend, right? And he he he's fought a lot of good guys, but uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why they took this. Uh, I don't know why they scrapped this fight and and booted him. Like it's kind of interesting. Maybe it was a mutual thing. Yeah. Um, I would hope it is, but at the same time. I did want to see Gus go against uh, Ben Rothwell, so I'm a little disappointed in that fight. Good comeback fight. Yeah, I wanted to yeah. see that because I wanted to see Gus win. Honestly, yeah. like I, I knew I, I thought Gus was gonna win that fight, but I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird. Maybe maybe he he was like maybe they got to this point where they tried to like renegotiate and get more money or some shit. You know, you mm. never know. Here's conspiracy, right? Because yeah. Hamzat's blowing up and because Smash Bros is all shot at All Star. And, you know, now all that shit's getting big as fuck, so everybody's going to want to watch everybody from All-Star. Maybe Ben Rothwell was like, hey, yo, look it. So, obviously, this fight's about to be high profile. I need a little bit more money. And they were like, no, fuck you. You not, you 90 years old. We don't give a fuck about you. And then Damn. just cut him. And then they'll mm. just give Gus a different fight. And I, I actually have a theory for who Gus is going to fight now because of this. And I'll Tom tell Aspinall. you in the next news story. <laughs> um, he called guys, on somebody. John Jones, uh, Mitch, he put this in a uh, Instagram post that uh, uh, Mitch that Ray showed uh, that it was his last time at light heavyweight. I want to read the um, the, uh, the tweet. Yeah, I think it was a tweet to you. Uh, my candle for light heavyweight blew out. It showed me in my last fight. Instead of being discouraged by a bad performance, I'm stoked about this new season. New energy. My time at light heavyweight was over. Whoa, I see that more clear today than ever. Um, you know what? That's Kinda why he's scary. at heavyweight. Kind of scary. scary to hear and guess that what? And there was another tweet. John Jones. There was another tweet that he put out on April 2nd. Uh, someone asked him, have you been offered a fight yet? And he said, nope. My plan is to be in peak condition come June, July. That is right around the corner. And who just lost a matchup at heavyweight? Mm. Alexander Gustafson. Mm. Okay, Gilly. Do we build it up again? No. I don't think I don't so. Think so. No. Because... But- that's what I'm trying to go for. Because Gus lost the second <laughs> fight, and then Gus lost his heavyweight debut. So I don't think they'll do that. But Hey, if he, if John Jones is a fight and UFC is being difficult and he can't get one of these top heavyweight contenders, hey, Gus, he's ready to step in two weeks' notice. Yeah. Chubby I think Gus. Yeah. I it think... would be cool, but I, I think like what Alex said, it's uh, I think we all Look. want to see John Jones fight one of the top contenders. Look, Ciro's a not going to a, a different person. I think he might. I think he's going to be tied up. Everyone wants that. I don't think anyone wants that John Jones smoke, honestly. Yeah, I think I think that's true. But I think there's a couple that will people. Beat him is Tom Aspinall. It's a, it's I'm going to put it right job. here. Tom Aspinall knocks John Jones the fuck out. And chokes oh, him out shit. while he's unconscious. Hey, Tom Aspinall is a hard fight for him because he's big as fuck, bro. But I, I think Ty mm. I think Ty Tuivasa is down to fight him, honestly. I, I think, think that would be a fun fight. That would be a good yeah. fight. Is I feel like it's an easy one for John, honestly. Uh, Maybe I think he might get tested. We you just got to, I mean? yeah. I don't want to say easy. I'd got to see him fight first, cause like these guys are bigger. It's not light heavyweights, yeah. you know. They're bigger, so you know he can do all that. Like you, you know, you hear these stories about what he used to do to heavyweights in the training room. It's like all right, but like this fight night though, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, I want to see. I just honestly think that he's just gonna wait for the Ngannou fight, cause Ngannou is already recovering. You know, he'll be back in like September or some shit. I think. That's the issue when these guys get so famous is that they can't just take any fucking fight anymore. You know what I'm saying? They got to do these big ass fucking fights because UFC is like, no, we're not going to put you in some little fucking fight. We're going to make it a pay-per-view. We're going to do it so we can make a shit ton of money. So I think they're just going to wait for that Ngannou fight, honestly, or make an interim belt if they keep Ngannou and they'll probably do Jones and Blades or some shit like that. Mm. There you guys mm. go. Um... Yeah. All right, guys, let's get into uh, the quick pick picks for this week. We've got a lot of fights to talk about, and it's pretty stacked. And by stacked, I mean you even have Alexi Olenek on the main card. Hell so yeah, baby. Hell, this is going to be a banger. Think about it. He's always on every card where there's a banger. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, honestly, every oh, every best card in the UFC, Alexi Olenek. Guess who's on it? Alexi, Alexi Olenek. Olenek. It's because they know that he's going to get banged up, so they're like, let's just put this guy on the fucking thing. And, and not, he got 59 wins, bro. 59 yeah, wins, big deal. Okay, don't disrespect him like that. How dare you? That is a lot of wins, dude. It's a lot of wins. That's and more wins he only than has Warzone. 16 losses. Damn, bro. But 59 wins, he was probably fighting people like at a fucking bar. 
Whoa. Ooh. You know, that's hey, striking, what's with bro. the shade, bro? Gata, 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 he probably went and was like, chose white belts and was like, hey, let's do a bro fight. And then he just submitted them. Like, that's rude as fuck. That's so rude. Dude, the guy's hey, the it's... worst. You know I love him. So he's a nice. He's probably the nicest dude. Nope. I probably, if you I went to him, Russia, dude. he'd you probably give me one of those cool hats that I <laughs> like a lot. And he would probably show me around town, you know, give me some nice little food spots, even though I don't want to go to Russia right now. But, you know what I'm saying? They would, he would be nice, but he's just probably the worst striker I've ever seen grace the octagon. Hey, guys, comment down below if you think Alex is bullying Alexi Olenek down in the comments. You just let you, you speak. Use your words and let us know if you think Alex is a bully. I, I yeah. will comment. And so also leave down in the comments below if you feel like Alex is bullying uh, Slotonic by pretending he doesn't know who they are. Mm -hmm. He knows who they are. Uh, main event, Alexander Volkanovsky versus the Korean Zombie. Uh, this is a fun Zombie. fight. You got a fan favorite versus another, I feel like, a new fan favorite after the Ortega fight. Mm -hmm. uh, people are really up on uh, Volkanovsky and his character and his whole vibe and his whole uh, personality. He's a Kiwi. So, so uh, gentlemen, we've got the champ versus the zombie. Who's, I feel like he's been in the game for like 85 years. It's crazy mm -hmm. that he's fighting for a championship right now. Yep. Uh, Nick, we'll start with you first. Uh, who do you got in? Give me a little bit of a taste of the why. Okay. Um, we all know that this fight was a last-minute replacement, kind of. Correct. For Chan Sung Jung. Some might say he may not necessarily deserve a title shot. Some might. Some people might say that. But I feel like for Alexander Volkanovsky, he wants new challengers. He wants a fresh face. Because he knows he's going to have to fight Max Holloway after this anyway. Um, I do feel like uh, Alexander Volkanovsky is going to win. I just feel like he's just too good. He's fought the best guys in the division. You know, with his win over Brian Ortega and like how he's been looking recently, you got to throw his name up there for one of the greatest featherweights uh, of all time. Like, I think it's him and Max, you know, and Aldo. Like, those are the guys. And he has two wins over Max, whether you think he won or not. Um, and I just feel like he has the wrestling ability. He has the striking ability. I feel like wherever he decides to put Chan Sung Jung, he's going to be able to do that successfully. Um, I feel like, Ch uh, Korean zombie always has an opportunity to, you know, knock somebody out cause his hands are that good and his timing is that good. But I feel like Volkanovsky is just too well-rounded. He's too, he's too physically strong. He just has everything going for him in the right direction. And I feel like it's going to be really, really, really hard for Korean Zombie to overcome Volk. And I think it shows in the odds because he's like a plus like 600 or plus 500 or something like that. Jeez. So um, he's a big underdog. And I think Volk by, I think, De decision. Decision. I think decision. Uh, Alex, Lift God. Acosta. Does All your right. mom like Morbius? <laughs> she loved it. All right, tell me about the fight. All right, so, uh, like, I honestly, I with uh, Chang Sung Jun, the Korean zombie, going to fight ready, like, I think that's a good move. Like, I my thing with Chang Sung Jun in the Brian Ortega fight is that he stuck to the game plan and never changed, right? But the issue with it was that it wasn't working. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, he wasn't able to change. Like, they, you could tell that he was staying, listening to the exact game plan. And I just feel like with Volkanovski, Volkanovski's so good, like Nick was saying, literally everywhere, that if Volkanovski starts doing something and Korean Zombie starts, you know, picking up on it, you know, maybe tagging up Volkanovski, mm -hmm. Volkanovski's going to change that shit immediately. And I know that he's with uh, uh, Henry Cejudo and them, and, you know, that's a, it's uh, how cringe, even Henry Cejudo being super cringe and all that type of shit, he is a smart dude. And, like, obviously they produce really good fighters out of Fight Ready. He's the head coach over there now, so he's, you know, they have a lot of good training partners and shit. But I just feel like that's probably going to be a downfall for him is that he'll stick too much to a game plan to where when something starts going wrong for him, he's not going to be able to switch it up. And then aside from that, like I said, so number one, Volkanovski is just going to be able to – he's just so good everywhere that he can do anything. He can wrestle if he wanted to. He will he can fight in South Pole, Orthodox. You know, he can do whatever the fuck he wants to. But on top of that, uh, I just feel like Zombie's way too flat-footed for Volkanovski. 
We mm-hmm. saw how good Volkanovski was able to, even in the second Max fight, use those low kicks to kind of, you know, wear down on Max's legs. And Max isn't really flat-footed, you know. He has really good footwork. And Korean Zombie is flat-footed, bro. Like, we saw that yeah. was, like, a big thing in the in the Ortega fight. So, I mean, I just feel like once you're going up against, like, a, a striking level of Volkanovski and, like, his wrestling, you know, his, just his heart, you know, it's just... I really, it would be cool for Korean Zombie to win. Like, I, I would actually be really happy, but I think Volkanovski is going to take this fight. I honestly think he might finish him. I think he might get, like, a third round, like, uh, TKO. I think he's going to eat his legs up with low kicks, and just it's just going to keep going from there. I think he'll take him down a couple times and then just beat him up, and I think, like, third round, they'll stop it. Mm-hmm. Wow. I like that pick. You guys love choosing the same pick. Yeah, that's interesting. I like the finish. I think it's a good call. Yeah, I played it too call. safe, and I was uh, I was being a pussy about it, and I wish in retrospect I said he was going to get a finish. Now it's going to happen, and Alex is the oracle, so it's going to happen now. Or maybe in some people's perspective, both of you had a pussy choice because your boy <laughs> is going for Chan <laughs> Sung Korean Zombie Jung. I think you guys are forgetting this guy served in Korean military for two years, and in that two years, all he thought about was Volkanovski. All he, he had photos in his cell because you know. You have cell. You're in a cell. <laughs> oh shit! You're in jail. When you're you go to the jail, Korean military. You're in jail okay. for the first you're couple jail. months. Huh? Did I misspeak? No, I said what I said. He was in a cell. He had a photo. Uh, Volkanovski is throwing darts at that face. Look, guys. Um, I'm gonna go more for the story for this. I feel like there is something that's telling me that Green could pull this off. It feels very Michael Bisping, Luke Rockhold to me. Big underdog. Last minute. I mean, why not do it for South Korea? They already have Squid Games. Like. Come on, oh, are shit. they not on a roll right now? Oh, are they not on a roll? How last is it? it though? It's like, isn't it like two months or am I trying? Oh, it's a good know. amount. It's a good amount of time. It's like six. It's like four or five months because yeah. they announced it a while ago. Yeah, I'm yeah. about to say like I don't know. It's it's he's had some time to train for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Forget that point then. Deal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. he accepted. He accepted this fight yesterday. He's gonna win. <laughs> uh. Just forget all that. Just let's just say that I think he's gonna win. Something in my gut. In hey, my it'll bubble, be cool. Bubble gut. Nick, are you going to wear your Korean zombie shirt that day? That's the real question. He's going to wear his uh, Volkanovski leg kick shirt. <laughs> you pussy. I don't know. I don't actually don't know where that shirt is right now. I'm in the phase where all my shirts are kind of like really hot shmeeting them on me. Is this an announcement? I get, You're moving? I get Nick's insecure. moving? Yeah. I get insecure about my shirts. So I had to. Th- I actually donated a bunch of clothes today. Like Respect. six, seven bags of clothes. Salvation Bro, Army when stuff. I moved, I don't know where that shirt is. I I gave away like literally seven huge black trash bags of clothes to Goodwill. Good for you, good for you, man. Everybody give Alex a round of applause. With the machine, with the machine, with the machine. Why do we have a soundboard? Oh shit, my bad. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, Come in event. Uh, we have a rematch. We have uh, Aljo Aljamain Sterling versus Pieter Jan. Pieter, Pieter, Pieter Jan. Um. Some would say Aljo's winning the first round last fight. Uh, then nah. some say after that first round, uh, he was dying slowly. And then <laughs> was saved by his own acting skills, some say. Uh, so I turn it to you guys. With that being said, Alex, Liv got a Costa. Give me your quick pick pick. Um, so Aljo posted this video where like him and all of the homies and Ally Quinta <laughs> were like out of the sauna, right? And he was Let's like flexing. Go. And he did. He looks in. He looks in shape. Like compared. Always in shape, though, right? No, no. But like he looked different, though. This one, like he's all, you know, veined up and shit. Yeah, all black (laughs) and just extra athletic and shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, But I just, man, watching Peter Yan fight Corey Sanhagen and just watch and then just remember, just like remembering, like Peter Yan almost toying with Aljo with some of these takedowns. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, uh. I wasn't on the Yan train at first, and then especially after the Aljo fight, and then when he after he fought Saint Hagen, though, I was like, "Yo, man, this guy is fucking good. Like he is, he is gonna be one of the best bantamweights weights I think that we've ever seen, honestly." And I just don't, I don't see Aljo beating him unless, like, like that first round that he had in the first fight. Yeah, he did good. If he can stay that exact pace, that forward pressure, keeping Yan going back. And doing that the whole fight, then he has a chance to win. But I guarantee you, he won't be able to do that. 
And uh, I think Peter Yan is just so good in he's he's almost like one of those fighters like a I don't want to really compare him to Cowboy Cerrone, but almost in that sense where I think it's kind of known that like that first round he'll almost take off a little bit because he wants to see what you're gonna do, and then man as the fight just goes on, Yan just becomes just a fucking absolute nightmare. So I I think Yan's gonna win this fight, and I think if Yan really wants to. He can finish Aljamain Sterling, and I think he can do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call like a uh, finish in like round two. Honestly, I think it. I think Jan hates this guy, and uh, man, I think he's really come. I think he's coming for blood this one. I think he's gonna put it on Aljo and finish him in the second. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nick, do you agree with that? Yeah. Honestly, um, I do think. I do think the fight is going to be a little different. I, I feel like... Oh, you do? Tell us. Uh, I, I think Aljamain is going to put up more of a fight in the early rounds. Um, I feel like if he's mm. smart, I feel like the path of victory is making it really boring, putting him on the cage, and being able to wrestle with him. Because uh, Jan is a fucking... He probably is right now the most technical fighter in the UFC. Mm -hmm. He's so good everywhere. His transitions make him amazing. Like he, he likes to clinch, strike on the way in, clinch, and then on the exit, he's already throwing crazy strikes. So anytime you're tangling up with Jan, he's either you're, you're in a threat of getting swept, you're getting a threat of getting taken down, you're getting a threat of getting knocked out or getting kneed in the face like Araya Faber. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he's so tricky and dangerous everywhere, and he's really violent. Like, he gets outstruck yeah. in most of his fights, but he still manages to, like, knock people down. Yeah. He, he kind of he invites the fight. Um, I feel that, like, for an Aljamain's, he kind of recapped his uh, first fight with him, and he said that he kind of blew his wad in the beginning of the fight. Even before the fight even happened, he didn't refuel his body the way he needed to. So, in his mind, he could keep this pace up. And that first fight was a bad example of that because he kind of misprepped. And that's why he kind of gassed out. But it's, it's going to be really tricky with a guy like Jan. And I feel that what Alex said about him being more aggressive this fight is probably going to be true. He's probably going to be in his face early. But it's going to be a battle of if Aljamain can uh, get Peter going on his back foot. Uh, I don't know if that's the case without wrestling. And I just feel like Jan is he's so good everywhere. It's so hard to bet against him. And if you, he has adversity in a fight, he finds a way to make it out the other mm -hmm. side. And with you know flying colors. So I think I'm going to go Jan. You know what I like that Jan does a lot? Like... Nick, you you probably you I'm sure you've recognized it Nick when he does like he does his cross he does like four crosses but he like switches stance as he goes forward mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking yeah. about he's like he shifts God, really well. God, God. bro it's like it's so gross it's like holy fuck he's so good and like his hands to, are so good just to piggyback on what Nick said I think that spinning back fist that he landed on Sanhagen San wasn't that like round four yeah, he timed that too because he was and, looking for it, yeah. and he knew that he pulled at the right second. He delayed it, waited for him to pull back in, then threw the spinning back fist. But the like thing about it is, so good. is round four, and it was so fucking fast. Like mm -hmm. the whole thing with like Aljo, if his plan is to try and gas Jan, Jan out, I think Jan showed us that he has a fucking gas tank. It's like on the level of Volkanovski. It's on the level of like these high end wrestlers. I'm like. Yeah, I'm excited for this fight too. I was such a huge fan of Aljo, but man, after I think the last fight because I, I, we all know how good Sanhagen is. I mean, Jan is just a fucking monster, bro. Yeah. I'm so yeah. happy him and Cody never fought because he would have put Cody to fucking sleep. Like, yeah. Look, guys, I'm not even trying to be controversial here. Yeah, you. I'm are. gonna take a page from Alex because Alex, I think at one point you had said. No one can touch Aljo on the ground. That guy can stick to you and choke you out. Another level. Do you still agree with that? Another level? Not anymore. Jan played with him. Jan played with him in the first in the first fight. But Taking him down was, with like little kick sweeps. But and here's shit. the playing. I don't think Aljo I think he's embarrassed, honestly. Like he, he's doing all these memes, he's doing all this shit. Uh you know, he's trying to play the cool, but I think deep down, the guy's embarrassed. 
like super embarrassed and i don't think which is probably why you were talking about he looks so good i think he's just training another level right now i don't think he tries to stand up he did try to like i don't know like hand fight with him uh with Jan, like the first fight which is weird i think he immediately hardcore hamzat chemaev khabib nurgamedov basically just take this guy down and he's gonna just go for the good old anaconda the <laughs> anaconda being in on anaconda 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 i honestly think he's gonna tap him out in the first two rounds i don't know if why. that happens if that happens i'll give you a hundred dollars <laughs> Hey, wait, hold on. I think first I think I'm just gonna tap. I think I'm just gonna tap him out in the first round. If he, if I for both of you guys, <laughs> if no, if no, I'll do it right now. <laughs> this is how confident. I, watch it happen. But <laughs> I don't I really. Feel, I think Jan's winning. I don't think. I really winning. feel like uh, he's gonna be okay. I think he's gonna be fine. But I, if there's, let's be real. If there's, how about this? If Aljo, if, if Aljo if, chokes him on the first two rounds, you give me a hundred bucks, and you also install the light bulb again. Okay. Deal. Deal. <laughs> um, and then if I win, you order me boba on the spot. Of your choice. Oh, my choice? Your oh, choice. you're getting yours yeah. all the way from London. It's going to be fucking, <laughs> it's gonna take forever. <laughs> yeah, Gilbert, you have to order us both boba. Nah, man, I live far. You know, and that boba bill finna be high, no, player. The stakes are just between me and Nick. If you want a different bet, then you got to go Aljo. Then I'll go Peter. And then we'll do our own bet. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Peter Yon's about to beat this guy's ass. First two rounds. First two rounds. If, if, if uh, Aljo subs Peter Yon the first two rounds, are you $100? And if it goes and third round, it's $50. Fourth round, $25. Mm -hmm. bucks. Fifth round, Aljo does it $5. <laughs> Fifth it's round, you owe him $1,000, bro. So it's <laughs> true, 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 true. All right, guys, let's get into the uh, the people's main event, or should I say the We Out Here main event. For me, my boy Gilbert, whose name I share, right? Um, Very personal. He's fighting Chimaev, hype train Chimaev. Very talented fighter. <laughs> Sean Strickland says stuff about him. People love the guy's vlogs. <laughs> not, you know, I'm not challenging that. I'm just saying, I've been saying this whole time, fight somebody. And guess what? <laughs> He's fighting somebody. So if he beats Gilbert Burns here, I wear a Chimaev shirt for two weeks straight. And you know it owes me $100. Okay, you know what's crazy is that, like, all he has to do to prove himself to Gilbert is fight the number two guy as he's name ranked number 11. Gilbert. You know what I mean? Jeez. It's mostly him fighting a name, Christ. a Gilbert name. That's all. I'm and saying. Gilbert yeah. will wear that shirt for two weeks straight because we witnessed Gilbert wear the same Coca-Cola shirt for, like, nine days in a row. So... He you know, means it when he says it, or whatever you know that button-up shirt is. We usually make fun for like you know people. Like we make a what's what's that called? A GoFundMe for some of us. Mm -hmm. We have a GoFundMe for Alex to get to Hawaii. We have a GoFundMe for me to get a new background. We need a GoFundMe for Gil for new shirts. So no, I have I love my shirts. I need new hats. Okay, got it. <laughs> new hats. <laughs> yeah, go go goes, for hats. You know what? You got it. Papa got yeah. it. Papa hey guys, got it. uh, GoFundMe please. <laughs> um. All right, we'll start with Nick first. Why no. do you think Chemayev's winning? Skip. Okay, okay. Alex, so why do you think Chemayev's no. winning? No. <laughs> Go, Alex. Um, I'm going to tell you this talked right about now. this a million times. Keep of course. Going. Just look at, even look at the height difference, bro. 5'10". Oh, ten, my God. Height? Two. We're doing height now? Le no, you're not letting me finish, right? 5'10", 6'2". Hamzat, manhandling, middleweights, wrestling, grappling. Gilbert Burns, he's a 55er fighting at 70. He's a small 70, okay? I mean, it's just Hamza is about to walk right. through Gilbert You're Burns. Right. And I think he knocks Gilbert Burns out. Kamar Usman just knocked out Gilbert Burns. Y'all remember that? Or TKO'd him, I should say, not knocked out. I think Hamza just has that confidence too, bro, where he just goes straight. It don't fucking matter. He's a fucking wolf. He's going straight forward. I will say this. If any fighter that he's going to fight, Gilbert Burns is maybe the most dangerous one that he can try and just pick up and try to grapple with because Gilbert Burns obviously has that jiu-jitsu background. But I just feel like he's not going to do that. He's just going to strike with Gilbert Burns, and I think he's going to knock out Gilbert Burns. And I'm going to call it right now. This is about to be a first-round finish. Your mic is still muted, just saying. Sir, I didn't – I just – it, my computer muted itself automatically because it was like, this is bullshit. Or, are you <laughs> sure? Or you weren't one. letting out those Zoolander <laughs> costs? This, like, <laughs> this is number one bullshit. Brother. Brother. Uh, Nick, what do you think? 
No, what's your take? Yeah, I want to hear yours first. You already know my take, guys. So I have no problem it. saying he's the greatest fighter in the world once he beats somebody. But how does Gilbert how does Gilbert win? You're not telling us how, how he How does wins. Gilbert Burns win? I guess we're just all about disrespecting Brazilian fighters that have been on winning streaks. <laughs> hey, right. don't say we, bro. Don't say we. All right. Fine, Alex. Alex right. Nick loves the Brazilians. He goes there. I love the Brazilians, bro. Look, Gilbert doesn't take him down, unfortunately. What happens is Chemayev is a little trigger happy because he's training with Darren Till, a striker uh, who hasn't won. So he's pretty confident out there uh, beating up everyone at uh, the All-Stars. He tries to stand up because, you know, he uh, knocked out Mare Shirt, which is like, whew, big deal, right? So rude. Disrespectful, yeah. dude. So what happens so is you come there a little too cocky being disrespectful to Gilbert Burns and your boy – is you know he's doing those lunges cross he's doing the lunging crosses this guy he ain't gonna be technical he's gonna be in your face push haymakers guess what chamayev go to sleep go to sleep but we all know chamayev's just gonna wrestle keep it boring whatever i don't think so all right we'll see we'll see that i'm probably wrong but let's we'll hear see. nick i want to see nick's okay i think uh go full what alex said over burns here we go uh, what guy, alex nick, said about um, Chimaev being a large man and Gilbert Burns being a smaller individual for that weight class, I think is going to be probably the biggest deciding factor of all this. Because of Hamzat's style, his physicality, his aggression, the way he kind of goes about his his fights is going to be a big uh, problem for Burns. Could I see Gilbert Burns maybe getting to his back somehow? No. And choking him out? You know, because he has that little classic armbar finish that he does from the back. Does does that happen? Probably not. No. Is there a, could could that happen? Yeah, it could, but I don't think it can. I give that like a ten percent chance. Okay. Well, I feel like Gilbert Burns could uh, knock out Hamzat. Mm-hmm. Potentially, mm-hmm. potentially, right? Because we haven't really seen him get hit. But with what we've seen from Hamzat, what have we seen? He Tell could me. probably take a shot. Let's just say that he could probably take a shot. <laughs> Who started a shot at him? His other fights, bro, before UFC, brother. Well, th- it's crazy. When you get <laughs> right two at. strikes landed on you in your whole UFC career, that's pretty nuts. Mm-hmm. That, that means nuts. there's a there's another there's another factor at play. Um, and it's him usually beating the shit out of somebody in the first round, not giving his opponents a chance. Um, I feel like he's gonna smother him a little bit. I think he's probably gonna get a like, I feel like Gilbert Burns' jiu-jitsu might be able to save him in certain positions and cause enough of a scramble where Hamzat might have to try a couple times to get him back to the ground or gets him down, but then he gets right back up. But all the in-between, I feel like, once again, goes to Hamzat. Maybe not a first-round finish, but maybe like a second-round finish, I think, by Hamzat. Wow. TKO. We'll see. Guys, we will see. I'm probably wrong, but we we'll still will see. I'm going to hold on yeah. to that Gilbert Burns. It's going to be a fun win. fight, though. It's going to be a really fun fight. It's going to be boring. I do, I do kind of feel bad for Gilbert because it's like he had a really tough showing from Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. And it's like, I forgot some who brought it up, but they said if Wonderboy didn't get submitted by Gilbert Burns, it's probably going to be a long shot that Gilbert Burns is going to be able to submit Hamza. So, That's I don't know. That's true, bro. Okay, fine. That was a good point. Bro, and eight. Hey, Hamza might be able to submit Gilbert Burns, bro. Like, I think he, I think he could. I think, I think that's the only way of winning, honestly. A rear naked choke. He takes him down. And he's just so aggressive, bro. And he'll just fucking yeah eat his he ass could. alive like some acai bowl. You feel me? Like and that's the thing. Matter. It's like Hamza could knock him out standing. If he yeah. has the power to knock out a 185er with one punch thrown, <laughs> one for one. I mean, is the guy a 185er? Gerald Marshall is an 85er, bro. But and, but then also too, Hamza might not be able to make 170 because the last one was a little shaky. So yeah. we'll have to see what he looks like on the scale because that might play a factor. But even if it does play a factor, this dude is nuts. We're gonna <laughs> see crazy. that size difference when they face off. Like yeah, when they face off, guy. bro. He remember I told you uh, Gilbert Burns was doing interviews with like Luke Thomas and shit, and he was standing next to them, and they're taller dudes, but he looked he just looks so small. Gilbert Burns is four full inches fucking taller than this dude, right? And he's just a big guy. He's like as big as Till and shit. It's just like, bro, I just, yeah. I what if Hamza know. comes out fighting like this? Do you think he loses if he does that? Because full karate. He does. He does. Uh, Darren Till. <laughs> what if he goes full like? Oh man, he's gonna do that, isn't he? Um. All right, guys. Speaking of uh, Darren Till, there's no segue here. Tisha Torres is it a little tornado? Oh, it's and a little Mackenzie tornado. Mackenzie Dern 
had a, an American accent and it evolved over time into a Brazilian Portuguese one. Who do you guys have? Mackenzie Dern or Tisha Torres? Man, this is actually a tough fight because you Tisha Torres is a uh, Mackenzie Dern all day. Tisha Torres is a, is a tough motherfucker, and she's she's very well rounded. But I feel like specialist wise. If if Mackenzie Dern doesn't, uh, actually I don't know. I think Mackenzie Dern. I think she she could sub her. But, yeah, probably. But I could totally see Tisha Torres winning a decision too. Like I think uh, it can go either way. And the kind of the blueprint. I won't say the blueprint, but a path to victory against Mackenzie Dern was shown against her when she fought. Uh, oh, what's her name? Amanda. What's her name? Amanda. Uh, oh, Amanda Evans. Uh, she fought. He not bus. Amanda Hebus. No, 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 uh, Amanda. Um, no, is her name Amanda? No, it's not. It's not Amanda. Uh, Marina Rodriguez. Marina Rodriguez. Sorry. Uh. The like there was there was a path to victory shown, and I feel like Tisha Torres could follow that path to get a decision win. Mm-hmm. But I don't yep. know. I, yeah, but I, I'm gonna go Mackenzie. Alex, we got on this. I, I yeah, I think uh, Tisha Torres is a really fast girl she's really she's strong but she's really good at like the the push kicks and that type of stuff right because she's like a karate background i honestly i think um i mean obviously there's only two ways this i think tisha's gonna win a pretty kind of boring decision or Mackenzie dern's gonna submit her but i honestly think that tisha torres is gonna do pretty well on just kind of like keeping distance using those kicks you know doing little explosions with you know some hand combos backing out Front kicks, you know, leg kicks, and I think that's going to be the whole fight. There you go. Uh, Mackenzie Darren, you know, I mean, you guys are right. Tisha can always pull off a decision. She's very good at winning decisions. Yeah. That's like a very, very good well skill rounded. she has. Very mm, good skill. Very well rounded. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, Alexi Olenek versus Jared Vendera. I think we all have to pick Olenek for this, no? Olenek, all day. You already know my pick. Let's Come on, go. Alex. Please, I Alex, just one time. On the UFC side, but. It's uh, it's oh, supposed, yeah, it, it got moved to the main card. Yeah, um, no, I got Jared. Alex, Vendetta. stop. <laughs> hey. one, we need one team pick. God, okay, maybe this next. I one. got Jared Vandera. <laughs> I got right, Alexi Olenek by a fucking flying triangle. Oh, like a Let's go. Like oh wait, flying bow constrictor. He goes like this. He just runs and goes. <laughs> Uh, any other shout outs? You know, uh, Rosa Struke is fighting on this, which is going to be fun to see how he bounces back. I know uh, Nick is excited about Ian Gary. Oh, you love you Ian Gary, don't you? I, at first, I wasn't because I was like, he's just another, you know, McGregor kind of guy. What's wrong but, with that? Um, but, but he's talented, man. He's really good. And he's training with a lot of good guys. And there's a reason why they, uh, I think the UFC thinks he's a star because they put him, there's a pretty big, hope, high profile fight. And they're matching him up with a really good guy. Um, what's his name? Darian Weeks. He's like a yeah. Muay Thai. He fought Ifma. You know what I mean? He's, oh, he's perfect really tough. matchup. It's a good matchup. Yeah, he, he's really tough. But um, I feel like it's a good test for Ian Gary. So I think this is it's it's the headlining fight for a reason. So I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like goodness. I like this one right here. Um, it's the striking coach of Team Alpha Male, Mike Mallet. Wow, he's really fucking good. Uh, it's I don't know why he's they're doing coach? our man. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing our man's in literally fucking Walmart basketball shorts but when bro, he's his, not on the contender series. The but, way he's standing doesn't even look like a striker. It looks more like a wrestler. Bro, he, no. So he actually won his uh, contender series really fight. Yeah, yeah, he won his contender series fight at in, via submission. But he's the striking coach over at um at Team Alpha Male, and you know I just you know I'm not the biggest fan of Mickey Gall. And uh, you're not what? Nah, I think he looks too much like Jim Carrey. Like, calm it down a little bit. But <laughs> he also retired from acting. Yeah. A so, days ago. Uh, I think I like that fight. And then you know, this actual fight card is really good. This fight right here, I actually met this girl at Black House this past week. I went and shot. Or were you at Black House? I shot some stuff for Super Rare. We shot it with one of the coaches there named Albert Morales, who used to fight in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Um. He's a he's a good friend of the shop, so he comes in a lot. But this girl right here, this Pieta Rodriguez, she's super she's nice, but she's a beast, bro. Like she's she's really good. I you didn't see her realize head pads or what. Well, yeah, she fought on the contender series too, and like she fought this other Brazilian girl, and it was a fucking war. She trains with Jason Park. I didn't Jason realize she was fighting Kay Hansen. I feel like this is a horrible fight for Kay Hansen. I'm surprised that this fight. 
that Kay Hansen took this fight. I think, yeah, the Pieta girl is about to like, whoop her fucking ass, honestly. Well, guys, watch out for that. Alex was in the same room. He was filming content for Black House, which is a crazy... Isn't that a crazy sentence to say? Alex was filming content at Black House MMA. Remember when Black House was like... I mean, it's still the spot, but like it wasn't the spot yeah. back in the day. Because Andy... Because young Andy. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, guys, that's our show. Those are our picks. As you know, those are always right. So pick all of those exact same picks. Uh, I thank my husbands for being here, uh, for just being wonderful guys with big old dongs and big old hearts. Not true. Uh, make sure you follow Alice at LiftGod. Follow Nick at Nick the Ear. Uh, do you guys have any uh, announcements or any special uh, shout outs you need to do? You guys can get my free fat loss ebook at training.com. If you guys want to check that out, we got a lot more articles, recipes, stuff like that coming out your way. So what are you cooking? Be on the lookout for that. What's the number You're one menu? Fucking item? business, dude. None of your What's business. What's the number one menu? Item? Okay, it's all about convenience, health. Okay, and yakitori, and yakitori grill. Yakitori. Oh, let's go. If you don't got a yakitori, you can't cook anything. You can't there. cook anything. We're gonna we're gonna grill lettuce. We're gonna grill Ooh. everything. Okay. I love it. I love it. Uh, Fuck Alex, you. anything special? You back on the streaming game? What's going on? Yeah, I'm streaming again. You can come by on Twitch, but really just fucking my fucking reels, baby. I'm trying to make content on top of content on top of content. Share my shit if you guys like it. You know, like it, comment on it, keep your boy in the fucking algorithm. And let's fucking go, bro. Let's turn hey guys, it up. Uh... More food videos. Yeah. No guests this week, but guests next week will obviously it'll be post uh, pay per views. We'll have our boy Vincent back on, uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, we love you guys very much. Play that outro music, uh, and that's all. Just bounce our shoulders. Hey, 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 h